Hi, my name is Lisa Carney, and I'd like to talk to you about portrait retouching fast. Now, I'm not talking about the eight hour job, the big full production. I'm talking about, you know, really quick, easy tips to kind of up your game in your portrait delivery. Now, I am a photographer and a retoucher. I do a lot of entertainment art and a lot of beauty. So I've been doing this for a really long time. And I think there are a few things you can do to manage expectations and to get jobs out without having to, oh my God, be an expert at everything. I mean, good criminy. There's so much you have to do as a photographer already. There's marketing, there's bookkeeping, there's all this social media stuff. And now you're supposed to be an expert retoucher as well. Oh, it's a big ask. So here's what I'd like to talk to you about. I'd like to talk to you about some quick techniques to really clean up your images fast and have your clients be thrilled. And I'm not talking about really huge retouching jobs. That's a whole nother conversation. This is just a quick down and dirty, but it's amazing if you just spend a little time doing just a few little techniques, how much better your portraiture work can look. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about like spotting and heavy spotting. And what do I mean by that? I mean doing uh, crosshairs. Like it's amazing when your hair's all a mess, if you just clean up some of these crosshairs, how good your image or how tight we often say it'll look with blemishes. And it's a really easy technique. There's only about three little tools you need to know about that. Five or 10 minutes can make a huge difference in your photo. Now, the other thing, the second thing I wanna to talk to you about is a bigger challenge and that's skin smoothing. Now, I would suggest the thing I'm gonna show you, frequency separation would only take you about 10 minutes, five or 10 minutes. However, it's gonna take you more than five or 10 minutes to learn how to do this. So I wanna be really clear about that. It may take you a few days, a week, but once you master this technique, you can just give a little kiss to your image and in five or 10 minutes, it, you'll be amazed how far you can get. And then the third thing I wanna to talk to you about is adding just a few little enhancements. And I'm gonna show you a video on how to do that. Things like you know, eyelashes or lightening the eyes or putting a little highlight on the face, if you will. And I'm telling you, in about 10 or 15 minutes, it's remarkable what you can get done. So come along, let's take a look and see what we can do together, okay? So as we dive into this quick portrait retouching session, I just wanna talk about managing expectations for yourself and your clients. So when you look at this image here and you start looking at, well, what do I need to take out? What do I leave in? What do I enhance? And um, that's kind of a personal aesthetic and that's gonna be your aesthetic and your client's aesthetic. And I just wanna be really clear about that, that there's no golden standard here. There's your opinion and your client's opinion and you hopefully want those to meld. And two, as I talk about this as quick techniques, let's be perfectly clear. It might not be quick for you to learn this and that's okay. So this spotting that I'm about to show you, that may take you a little while to get a handle on it, but I promise you, the more you practice, you'll get faster and faster. So while it takes me five minutes to do this, maybe, maybe for you it's a half an hour when you start. Okay, but you'll get faster, I promise you. And then the second part, the frequency separation. Honest to Buddha, it's gonna take you a minute to learn it. But I promise, I promise, if you get this down, it'll take you five or 10 minutes. So let's take a look. The first order of business is to have a plan of attack. So how I would approach this job is I would do spotting, that would be sensor spotting, um, blemish spotting, and crosshairs. And what I mean by that is things that you'd consider non-negotiable, that you know you want out. Second, I would then do some light skin smoothing using frequency separation. And then the third thing I would do is add some details. So if you notice here in the eyes, uh, there's a little darkening and lightening for the eyes. And I've added some soft light on the face, kind of a dodge and burn kind of effect. And I've smoothed out the hand wrinkles. All this took about 15 minutes. So spotting, I'm gonna do a before and after here. And what you'll see is I have taken some crosshairs out. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to do this in just a second. A few crosshairs, some veins in the eyes, a few blemishes. Notice the fingernails needed a little sugar. That's all done in the spotting. Again, this is kind of the non-negotiable, what you know your client's gonna want taken out, okay? 
some of the hairs that are out on the outside took those out as well all right after the spotting is done then we're going to do frequency separation and let me do a before and after before after excuse me that's the after there's the before and again i'm going to show you how to do all of this and then the last step is going to be adding details or enhancements so you'll notice i added a little soft light over the face and I added some eyelashes and I added a little highlight on the nails. Let's get started on spotting. The tools you're gonna use are the heel tool, spot heel tool, and the clone tool. And how you have your window set up and your tools set up is up to you. And how I like to do it is I like to make a copy of my original. I like to work on a flat, full layer, not a floating layer that is transparent. That's just my own personal preference. And I like to work up close and personal. So the tool I like to start with is the spot healing tool. And what will happen is Photoshop will try to guess what pixel next to the image you have that where you're painting is going to match the best. So you literally, oh my gosh, I love this. This is like Zen. And I go in and I just brush and the AI technology is going to fill in whatever pixel is next to those. And I like to work around the piece. And what I mean by that is I don't do a lot of time in one section because I tend to make a little bit of mistakes. Did you notice I just over uh, painted that? No big deal, I can go over it again. So again, working around a piece means you don't concentrate in one area for a super long amount of time because you can kind of lose sight of what you're doing. So I'm just taking out what we would call non-negotiables. And you can spend five or 10 minutes doing this. Um, at the beginning, I had mentioned uh, having a plan of attack. I think it's really good to look at your piece first and see like, oh yeah, I know I don't want these hairs here. I know those blemishes, those neck hairs. I want those out, that kind of thing. And look how peaceful and easy this is. Now that's the um, spot healing tool which I absolutely love. Uh, another tool I want to talk about is the Content Aware Fill. And let me show you that in just a second. Let's zoom on over here. So the other tool I like to use is I like to take the lasso and then go to the Edit menu and do Content Aware Fill. And that's also a really handy way of cleaning up. Um, I use the Content Aware Fill tool, this one, and the uh, Heal tool interchangeably so it's really i don't know it's kind of whatever you like best uh use a combination and yeah and i don't think i'm going to spend the five or ten minutes and watch you have you watch me do every single hair but i think you get the idea look how easy that is and do you notice i am going around the piece that is super super important don't stick to one spot now, I want to show you another little mm, issue, let's just say, with the content aware. Sometimes the content aware, the heel tool, works great in areas like this, and then sometimes it doesn't, and you have to revert to the clone tool. So, like for example, if I'm here trying to fix the uh, nails, that's looking kind of okay, but I've got this weird mark. I might want to switch over to the, the clone tool. Make my brush a little smaller. I use the brackets for that. And then what I do, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to do this. I do a real quick kind of mm, hack job fill, just super quick. And then I go back to the heel tool. I love doing this. And then again, make my brush smaller using the brackets. And then I go in and smooth it out with the heel tool. And then I might need to go back to the, the um, clone tool you're gonna knowing your quick keys is really handy for something like this and I'm gonna put the clone tool on 50% opacity and I'm just gonna lightly clean up this um, yeah getting a manicure is always a really good thing so the combination of the heel tool and the clone tool sometimes you want to use the clone tool to fill in because otherwise photoshop's guessing so look at this i'm trying to heal this edge and it's keeping it really light i may want it light i may not if i don't want it light you switch to the clone tool real quickly super quick then go back to the heal tool i'm using my quick keys to do that and then i can kind of smooth it out if you will so again non-negotiables notice i'm on the heal tool i am 
interchanging between the spot heel tool, which is kind of content aware fill. I keep saying content aware. Look up here. The content aware is the section or the tool I have it set for the heel tool because they also have texture or proximity match. I want content aware. Right? Y'all getting this? Look how easy peasy lemon squeezy. And sometimes it messes it up a little and you have to go over it a few times. No big deal. And this is where I get into my happy place. I just spend five or 10 minutes cleaning up. Oh, this is also really good for the uh, knuckle lines. I didn't mention that earlier. Knuckle lines, get those. Get rid of the knuckle lines. Any hoozy. I think you guys get the idea. The key is to work around the piece. Set your timer because you don't want to spend too much time. And you just have to know what parts do you want to get rid of. Like, I think these hairs are a little distracting, right? So I want to get rid of those. Oh, look, I missed one. No big deal. You go back over it. And yeah, I don't know if I can. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, but I think you get the idea. And look how fun and easy. All right. So let's take a look at the before and after just from spotting. All right, let's take a look at what's been done. Some hairs on the outside, the fingernails, some blemishes. Not a ton of work, but just enough to clean it up a bit. Now, hey, did you know this trick? If you put your retouch layer on difference, you can actually see where you've done your work. Isn't that kind of cool? That way you can see, oh, I didn't do anything in here. Do I need to double check that? It's kind of a way of... I don't know, checking your work. Now, nah, I think I'm cool with that section there. All right, let's move on to frequency separation. All right, before we start this frequency separation section, quick caveat, this takes a minute to learn. Do not panic, please do not panic. I'm gonna show it to you fairly quickly because it's a quick process. And there's a link to a long form video, 30 minutes to go through it in depth with some other images. Just sit back, relax, take a listen, and don't be freaked out by frequency separation because honestly, it is the most important tool I use for beauty retouching, hands down. All right, first of all, we have to discuss that frequency separation is really a process where you separate your image into high frequency, and low frequency. The low frequency is the tone and the color, and the high frequency is the detail. I'm gonna tell you that languaging really turned me off to this process. In plain speak, high frequency is a gray layer with detail, and the low frequency is the blur layer with the color and tone. As I said, there's a video that'll explain this in complete detail. I'm just gonna go ahead and walk you through it on this image. You're going to start by making two copies of your retouch layer. Copying my retouch layers, I'm going to select those two by holding the shift key and clicking on the name. I'm going to put those in a folder and I'm going to call this frequency separation or FS. Now, what you're going to do is on the bottom layer, you're going to blur it. And on the long form video, it'll tell you how, how much to build it, blur it, excuse me. I'm going to blur this one 10. Let's call it blur 10. Now in the second one, this is where it gets a little interesting. This one's gonna be the gray layer and how you do this, again, do not panic. There's a whole video on how to do this. You're gonna go under image, apply. It's a formula here. You're gonna pick the blur layer. That's why you label it. You're gonna turn this to subtract. Who's ever heard of that? And you're gonna set it at two and 128. This is a formula. You're gonna have a whole handout on this. All right, then the most important thing is this needs to put, put on the mode called linear light. And when you've done frequency separation and you turn the folder off and on, your image should look exactly the same. And what you now have done is created a workspace called frequency separation in which you're gonna do your retouching. All right, with frequency separation, I'm gonna show you what kind of things I fix. So this is a before and after. Here's the after, here's the before. So what I'm gonna do is smooth down her skin and fill in a little gap of color on the top of her hair. And I'm gonna smooth down her hand. Let's look at it a little closer and then I'm gonna show you how we did it, okay? So it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So let me 
delete what I've done so I can show you. So as I said earlier, you're gonna make your frequency separation space. So on this one, we did a blur 10, and then we used the apply image to make the gray layer, and we set that gray layer on linear light. Now for the blur, the object is you're gonna blur or get rid of some skin imperfections and some maybe tone. And the tools that I like to use for this are really any tool that will blur the paint layer or paint itself, like a paintbrush or the gradient. Let me show you. Whenever I start, I make a copy, Command J or Control J, just in case I mess up. And I, in fact, I'll just call it blur copy so that in case I make a mistake, I can revert back. So what I often like to do is I like to take a section of the skin. So I'm gonna take the front here. I'm gonna hold the lasso tool, add a little more and add a little more. Again, I'm just trying to kind of smooth the skin down. So what I do is now do it on a Mac Command J or on a PC Control J. And here's what I'm left with, with these little bits. And I go to the filter blur and I blur them. So I'm gonna blur them, let's say 20. And let me show you a before and after. That's after, that's before, after, before. And do you see how it smooths down the wrinkles? Do the same thing on the hand. I'm gonna make a loose selection on the hand. This is so easy. I just absolutely love this. Again, I'm gonna hit Command J, Command J on a Mac or Control J. And what I've got is I've got basically the hand and I'm gonna hit the Gaussian blur again, blur 20. And then look how nice and gentle that hand looks already. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice is the detail layer, the gray layer, is where all the wrinkles are. So how are we gonna fix that? Well, first of all, we're gonna make a copy, Command J, uh, or Control J on a PC. Now, one thing you'll notice is, oh my gosh, now she's gotten worse. Don't panic. You have to take this off linear light mode and put it on normal. And then I'm gonna hold the Option key on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and I'm gonna clip these two layers together. This is all on an extra video on frequency separation that you can watch to go through it again slowly, so don't panic. Now on this copy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blur the skin detail. And how I do that is I'm gonna to go to Noise, Dust and Scratch. This is a really handy little filter. And I'm gonna zoom on in there and see how far I wanna go. The radius will change based on the pixel size of your image, okay? So there's no golden rule here. I think this looks pretty good in terms of knocking down some of that skin detail, but oh my gosh, look, it blurred everything else. Don't panic. You're gonna put a black mask on this by holding the Option or Alt key and clicking on the Add a Mask icon, and then you're gonna take your paintbrush. Let's see, yeah, this might be a good size. And with the color white on the mask, I'm gonna paint that in. So do you see how I'm painting in the smoothness on her skin? Lickety split. Now what will often happen with frequency separation is that folks will overdo it. Can't be helped. It's just the tendency of people. Like this is just way too much but we're not gonna panic, are we? No, we are not. What I'm gonna do is leave it at this full opacity while I'm painting it in. Da, 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 da. And then what I'm gonna do is change the opacity of this layer so that it's not so intense, okay? I think you get the idea here. Let me change this opacity to 50. And let's already look at what we've got here. Before, after, before, after. It's already starting to look really good. And effectively, what you're doing with your frequency separation layer is you're reducing the texture. Yes, you're reducing the texture on her face just so it looks a little, mm, a kiss of lightness. But you don't want to go too far. You don't want to take her whole character out. This is a pretty easy technique. Again, learning frequency separation can be challenging, but once you've learned it, the process is pretty quick. Now, if I look at, I'm gonna um, do this. I do this all the time, by the way. I wanna merge these blur layers that I've already made because I don't wanna have 100 layers. So I'm gonna be on the copy. I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'm gonna click all the way through and then Command E or Control E will merge those together. And that way I have a really simplified file, okay? 
Now, one of the things you can do, I shown on the tools, you can use the smudge tool. Check this out. What if I wanna kinda straighten out her nose a little bit? Again, I don't know if you should do this, but if you want to, look at this. You can use the smudge tool to, to straighten out colors. What if you wanna reduce the tone on the side of her nose? Check this out. I'm gonna make a new layer that's blank, and I'm gonna take the gradient tool, and I'm gonna put it on radial gradient, and then I'm gonna select a color near her cheek, and I'm just gonna click and drag, and I can fill in with a gradient to also smooth out. Now this might be a little heavy handed, or maybe you like it, I don't know. Again, this is all aesthetic. She's got that little tone under her eye that looks a little harsh, gradient tool under there. This is how you lighten under the eyes. You use the gradient tool to paint. Let's show you what that looks like. Literally, bits of gradient. And because it's on its own layer, I can also take down the opacity. If I think it's too much, I can take it down. Isn't this flexible? I mean, it's absolutely amazing. The uh, dark shadows by her nose, maybe you're not sure. If you're not sure, not sure. Take the gradient tool, select a color nearby, and fill it. Huh, I kind of like it. I think it's softening down her face, right? So this is the power of frequency separation and you can spend a lot of time doing this or just a few minutes. It's really up to you. So I think at this point, I'm gonna stop where I'm at because I think you have the general idea and I'm gonna really encourage you to watch that long form video on frequency separation. It breaks it down very, very slowly. And I just wanna show you a before and after again of where I netted out on this. This was about uh, five or six minutes of spotting and then about five minutes in frequency separation. So I'm about 10 minutes in on this retouching job. Let's look at enhancement details. Let's recap for a second. We've got spotting done, and now we've done basic frequency separation. The next section is details, and I'm gonna do a before and after on the details and talk about what we're gonna do before we do it. So first of all, there are eyelashes added. There is a lightning and a shadow added to the eyes. Let me zoom in so you can see that a little clearer. And then the nails, of course, a highlight added to the nails, never a bad thing. And then kind of a soft dodge and burn type style effect over the whole face, including the hair, just to add a little volume to the face. Let me show you how we do this. The first thing we need to understand for adding enhancement is layer blend modes and how they relate to dodging and burning technique. So when you have a grayscale image on top of an of a file and you put it on the mode called overlay you'll see how intense the lightning and darkening gets if you put it on soft light it is less same technique just less and this relates to the old-fashioned term dodging and burning that you used to do when you were doing enlarging dark work making a print so many folks do this technique by actually using the dodge and burn tool in photoshop i do it simply by painting let me show you I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna call it nails. And I'm gonna put it on the mode called overlay because I wanna make the dodge and burn kind of technique. And it's really quite simple. You just make a small brush about the size that you think the shine in the nail wants to be, maybe a little smaller. And then I just click and click. And then click and click. And now that looks too bright to me. So I'm gonna put it on soft light. Oh, that looks much better. And then I may choose to actually thin down by erasing, thin down some of that. Helps if I have black as my color. But it's just a nice way of making a nail highlight where there once was, and it cleans up pretty easily. Now that same technique I'm gonna use to lighten eyes. And I'm gonna do, you know, I'm gonna put the paintbrush at a low opacity like 10 and I'm gonna go ahead and do it pretty big, a little wider than I think, and I'm just painting with white. Now that's on the mode called normal. I'm gonna put it on overlay and see how I like it. Mm, might be a little intense, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on soft light. 
a little more gentle. Now it's bleeding over the eyes and I might not want that. So again, I'm going to put a layer mask on. This is really simple. It's all the same technique and I'm just going to paint out over the pupils. Now another technique for this that many people don't know about is putting a lid shadow. And to do that, I'm going to do a new layer, lid shadow. Again, I'm going to put it on overlay to start. And I'm going to use the color black, a low opacity brush, like 20. And I'm just going to paint a little shadow for the lid. Now I overpainted because it's easier to overpaint and then mask it out. Just a little technique and I'm going to paint out this shadow. Yeah, I think that looks pretty decent, but I want it under my eye lightning. So I'm going to just switch my layer order. So there's my shadow and there's my light eyes. Pretty easy peasy. This is taking about three minutes. Now I'd like to add some eyelashes. And for that, this is a stamp brush. So I'm going to make a new layer called eyelashes. And let me show you these brushes I have. And these brushes are amazing. They are what we call a stamp brush. So let's say I want to pick this one open right. And I come over here to my eyelash layer. Obviously that's way too big, but if I scale down using the brackets, I can get something close. I pick a black color and I'm just going to hit the brush once stamp. And then I, obviously that's not correct and not going to work, but if I go command T to transform, I can actually scale this down even more pin it to where I want by moving the center dot, rotate it, and then bada bing, go to warp and warp this lash into something I like. Yep, I think I like that. I think that looks pretty decent. And um, you may want to move it down a little more. You may want to change the color. You may want to warp it again. I often take a couple minutes to get this to feel feel just right for me and that might be a little heavy for you I don't know yeah I think I'm gonna leave that I will command J to make a duplicate command T it hold the control key and I can flip this horizontally and then take it over to the other eye and rotate it and then command T or go to the warp under the edit menu and put that into position. Now, if you look at these brushes, I have a gazillion, an absolute gazillion of these. And if you change the um, stroke, you can see it just as a, a stamp because this is a stamp brush. If you would like to have these eyelash brushes, feel free to email me at lisa at lisacarney.com and put eyelash in the subject matter and I would happily send you this set. And then what I end up having is I have a pretty decent set of eyelashes. That might be a little heavy for her, but you can change and look at all the other ones and find one that suits her better or make it a different color or even sometimes lowering them. Because if you notice, it's a little, her eye, eye lid looks a little thick, so you might want to lower it down. Anyway, they look a little spidery to me. I think I would do something slightly more subtle, but there you have some eyelashes with a stamp brush pretty darn quick. Now let's get to the soft light effect. For clarity and good file prep, I like to put my details in a folder. So I'm going to be on the bottom layer. I'm going to hold the shift key, click on the top layer, and then click on the folder down below to make a new layer set. And I'm just going to call that enhance. I just like to keep everything neat and pretty. All right, for this enhance, pay attention. We're gonna do something kind of fun. We're gonna click on the channels. And on the channels, you have a blue, green, and red. And generally with the portraitures, I pick the green channel. I'm gonna drag it down and make a copy. It's called a channel pull. And then Lisa says levels, command L to do a levels move. I'm gonna darken it up because what I'm trying to get is just a nice highlight. That looks like a good highlight to me. And now I'm going to do something fun. Under filter, I'm going to go to distort and I'm going to go to diffuse glow. Check this out. The diffuse glow is going to give a soft little blur or diffusion to that channel. So I'm going to take the glow down to zero. That's nothing. And then I'm going to move it around six or seven. I'm going to take the clear out. If it's clear, there's all glow. <laughs> For the clear amount, the more you pull it over, 
the less glow you have. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to put it eh, right about there. And I tend to leave the graininess at zero. And what this does is does a nice little diffusion or glow. All right. Now I haven't done anything but make a channel. Now pay attention here. I'm going to hold the control or command key. And look what happens to this icon. I get a hand with little marching ants. I'm going to click on it. And that loads the selection for that channel. I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to call it glow. And I'm going to fill it with the color white on a Mac. That's uh, command D to fill with the background color, which I happen to have set as white. And now you see, I still have those marching ants, right? I haven't hit deselect. I'm going to load a mask by clicking on the add a mask icon. And now look at that. I've got a nice little glow. Hmm, it's a little heavy. So do you remember those modes? We can change it to overlay mode and see what we get there. Still a little heavy. And we could put it on soft light. Ooh, I like that. Soft light looks a little better. Now, I kind of liked the overlay on her face, but the soft light on her hair. Why don't I do this? Why don't I make a copy? Command J to copy that. And this time I'm going to fill the mask with what black. And I'm just going to switch my air, my paintbrush back to a generic brush. And I'm going to just paint it in using the color white on my mask and just paint that glow on her face. And this time I'm going to reduce the opacity. And now I've added just a little more glow to her face. And then I still have the hair highlight. Those are enhancements, so I'm going to drag them down into the enhancement folder and let's do a before and after. Before and after. And honestly, when you do this a few times, you can do all of this in about 15 minutes. So give it a go. So let's be real about some of this retouching business. I'm not going to lie, there is so much more you can do to an image. It's just a question of the job. Is there the time and the budget to do more work? If you're interested in diving deeper into doing more intense retouching work, I'm going to tell you at the Portrait Masters, there are some beautiful classes you can taste. Christina Shirk has some amazing classes that get more in depth on skin retouching and or uh, dodging and burning to bring out that volume in the face, cleaning up eyes. Pratik's got some great sessions on that. So if you want to dial in deeper, by all means, go for it. There's color correcting, skin correcting. My goal with this little conversation is that you don't have to do all of that for every job. Not every job warrants four to eight hours. Frankly, it's probably not enough money for all your jobs to have that. So once you learn these quick techniques about just doing simple cleanup, then if you're interested, you dive in deeper. Or if you're not interested in doing more, you outsource it. You know, don't be afraid to hire a retoucher if this isn't your jam. And um, yeah, there's just, there's a lot you can dive into or not. Have the freedom to not go deeper if you don't need to. So I hope you found some helpful tips here. And um, yeah, have fun. Happy retouching.